morning, good morning, good morning. A very special warm welcome to you this morning. Those of you who are physically present with us, those of you who are on Facebook and Zoom. We also have a very special guest this morning, and I apologize if I get the information wrong, but we have some visitors here from the Missionary Baptist Church General Mission, the Junior Mission. If those ladies are here, do you mind standing for us? If you're out here this morning? we like to acknowledge your presence. Thank you for being here. You're in for a treat. We are led by the world-renowned Dr. Samuel A. Smith and his most precious, perfect wife, Sister Spilva Smith. Our church martyr is, you enter not as a stranger, but as a guest of God. My personal testimony this morning is that we take waking up every morning for granted. Reverend Steve Clark says, if he doesn't do anything else for you, he woke you up this morning. He woke you up this morning. He woke you up this morning. And for that, we need to be grateful. You are welcome, welcome, welcome. and worship time here in the house. Anyone excited to tell God thank you and give him his praise and worship this morning? I know I am. If I got the praise in by myself, I will do it. You're able to stand to your feet. Use your voice and your hand. Come on, ask Jesus. Step into the room with us.
of my life, I will serve the Lord. Amen. Yeah, glory be to God for all the marvelous things he is doing and will do in our life. Amen. Yeah, God is good and all the time. Amen. The scriptorial reading that I'm going to do this morning will be John 4, John 4, and I'm going to start at verse 10, I'm going to start at verse 10, as pastor would say, listen to this as uh, the words of God soak your soul here, Jesus is everlasting, when you have it, say amen. Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knewest the gift of God, and who it is that saith to thee, Give me to drink, thou wouldest have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. The woman said unto him, Sir, Thou hast nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. From whence then hast thou that living water? Art thou greater than our father Jacob, which gave us the well, and drank thereof himself and his children and his cattle? Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. But whosoever drinketh the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. Amen. All right, please stand for the power of prayer. Let us bow. Our Father, we come before thee now with humble hearts. We come calling on you, dear Lord, because you are all we know. You're the source and the strength of our life. And without you, we're nothing. So we come, first of all, giving you thanks for blessing us and keeping us and holding us. Even right now, we thank you. Thank you for another week's journey. Thank you for a safe journey back into your house. We ask the Lord that I would continue to give safe passages to those who are yet on their way. O oh, the Lord, have thine own way today as we come to lift your name in praise and adoration. For truly you have been good unto us. You've been better to us than we've been to ourselves. For Lord, not only have you kept us and sustained us, but you wrapped around us your loving arms protecting us and sheltering us from the storms of life. We thank you, Lord, for giving us the good things that you have and for restoring within our soul and allowing us to share within the joy of thy peace. We thank you. Now, Lord, as we come to lift up your name today, 
We ask that you would fill us with your spirit. Let it fall down upon each and every one. Oh, dear Lord, bless those that come to lift you in song. Oh, dear Lord, touch those, dear Lord, that will hear. Not only hear the song, but also hear your word. Let it resonate not only in their heart, but also in their soul. Let it move, dear Lord, unto everlasting life. Have thine own way, O oh Lord. Have thine own way. And then, Lord, when we've done all we could do on this side, give us a place in thy kingdom that we can give thy name eternal praise. It's in Jesus' name that we give you the thanks and the praise. Amen and amen. chant this together. Thank you. Thank you. You, Lord. You, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Just want to thank the Lord. Any thankful hearts this morning? I just came to thank you. God, thank you with your hands. If you, even if you can't, you don't feel like talking. You can just clap, and He knows all about it.
is worthy to be praised. I say truly God is worthy to be praised. Now that ought to deserve a hand clap from everybody. Let's just praise the Lord. Let's just praise his holy name. Let's just praise the Lord. Let's just Let's praise his holy name. Let's just praise the Lord. Come on, stand to Let's your feet. Praise the Lord. 
to the nightclub. They didn't sit up in there quiet. They would get it on. And whatever, whatever spirit they had in the glass, uh, that let them praise him more, get it on more. You know, when the Lord saved you, he should not have taken from you the rejoicing. You ought to be rejoicing more. Amen, amen, amen. You ought not to give the world more praise than you give the Lord. Hallelujah. Now we're going to call upon my singers to do one more song and then we're going to let Son Germain come up and conduct the offertory of worship. However, those of you that are going to honor the request that has been made uh, concerning the uh, this day, we're going to ask that you would honor the Lord with your substance. Amen. Whatever the Lord has blessed you with, you ought to bless the Lord. Amen. And uh, when they would have finished with this song, it would be time for the blessings to be re received. And if you want to honor the years of our church, we want you to make sure that you would do that in recognition of our men and women's annual day. Amen. You know what has been asked of you. So we ask that you would uh, respond. You, you know, uh, when it comes to God's blessing us, we don't want him half-stepping. And when it comes to blessing the Lord, he don't want you half-stepping.
worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. He's worthy to be praised. Let us continue on in the spirit of worship. We have now reached a time where we can all participate in worshiping with our tithes offering and our free will gifts, being reminded of how God wants us to give. As the Apostle Paul says in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, he says, as it is purposed in a man's heart, so shall he give. Not grudgingly, nor of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. Let us pray. Gracious God, our Father in heaven, oh God, how we love you, how we praise you, how we magnify your holy name. Father God, even though this is the offertorial period, we just want to extend a further praise to say thank you. God, we thank you for all that you have done. We thank you for what you're doing. And because of who you are, we have great expectation for what it is that you shall do. Now, Lord, we pray that you would touch this portion of the worship service. We pray that you would encourage those that have it to give according as it is purpose in their heart. For those that don't have it, encourage them. Let them know that you are a God that have never left them nor forsaken them, that you are a God that will supply all their needs and that you would give them the opportunity to do so at another time. This we thank you. In Jesus' most precious name we pray, amen and amen. God bless you all. For those of you who are visiting with us on today, Mount Horeb is a unique church. Uh, we don't have pep rallies or pep talks about giving. We only have one offertorial period, and that's right now. So if you want to give, this is your opportunity to do so. For those of you who are worshiping with us uh, virtually, uh, there are three ways to give. And those ways are presented before us by our media team on the screen.
I can't praise you enough, even if I try, cause you've been so good, you've been so good, oh, you've been so good to
been better than good to me. He's been better than good to me. He's been better than good to me. Help me out, he's. Yeah. He's been better than good to me. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. You know, when that song was being sang, it should have resonated through every one of us. Because in some way or another, the goodness of God has been expressed in your life. Amen. He woke you up this morning. He didn't have to wake you up, but he did. It was not because of you and because of him, because of he's so because he's so good. Hallelujah. You know. When that song was being sung, sang, it should have caused every one of us in here to think about the goodness of God in a particular way. Amen. He's made a way for somebody. H has he made a way for, for somebody? You, you don't mind waving your hand if you know he has made a way. Hallelujah. He's been a doctor for somebody. He's been a lawyer for somebody. And oh, the thing that is utmost, he's been a friend to everybody. Hallelujah. So good. Not has been, but is being right now. And I dare you to set up in God's house an expression of his goodness and not say, not show gratification. You can't pay him because the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. So whatever you have, it belongs to God anyway. But oh, you have a thanksgiving in your heart. There were 10 lepers. that asked the Lord Jesus Christ for healing and he healed all 10 of them. But only one came back to say thank you. You can't pay the Lord 
but you do owe him a thank you. You owe him a thank you. Amen. You, you owe him a much obliged. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but oh, God has been, and he is now so good. Woke me up this morning, started me on my way, put running in my feet, clapping in my hands, shouting in my heart. Can you say hallelujah? Can you say hallelujah? Can you say hallelujah? Hallelujah. Lord, praise the Lord. Thank you, singers. Amen. Thank you, Robert. Oh. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Lord, thank you, 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 Lord, hallelujah. Now, before I preach your come, he's the son of this church. Amen. Amen. Really and truly. Amen. You. You, you see, let, let me tell you, let me tell you what's going on right now. God is a... a one of the nephews of the one that is rejoicing they found dead last week. This is the first of the amen. And we do, we are waiting. He's a member of this church. We're waiting to uh, find out when the arrangements is going to be made. But you know, when you have a burden, and God lift that burden. You can't help but praise him because he is a burden bearer and a heart fixer and a mind regulator. Hallelujah. Amen. Yeah. 
You, you, you see, you just ought to give God praise and glory and honor when he does something for you. You, 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 amen. All, all you can do is, is, is say thank you. Amen. Nothing else you can do because all, all of it is his anyway. And you too. Um, so my son, who readily had, had accepted this day, amen, um, he does not need any introductions to my horror. Not her know who he is. But for the benefit of the ones that are guests, the speaker of the hour is Pastor of St. Mark Missionary Baptist Church on Lowndes Avenue. And uh, when he went to help his, his brother out. Little, little, little did he know that he would wind up being pastor of the church that was helping his brother out. If you're faithful, God will award you for your faithfulness. And so when son Tim left St. Mark and went to uh, Fort Worth, Texas to pastor that church, St. Mark called this young man. Um, he has done a magnanimous job at the St. Mark Church and um, I, I, I can't introduce him by his nickname uh, no no but I will present him to you as the humble pastor of the St. Mark Church in the person of Reverend uh, what's your first name? <laughs> Dane? Okay, I had to act his first name. <laughs> Pastor Dr. James B. Glenn. give all praises to God who is worthy to be praised. We thank him for his grace, mercy, and peace that has been much supplied to our pastor and father. We give glory and honor to God for you. And with him not calling me by my nickname, it has never stopped him in the past. So I don't know why he's changing up now. I get a little offended if he doesn't call me by that name. To these brothers who share the burden of preaching to you, the officers, official staff, brothers and sisters in Christ, to mother, good to see you. God bless you. I love you. To all of our family, Thank you for allowing me to be here with you today. Uh, I went a little too far in preaching this morning. I'm sorry you're only getting what's left. 
uh, I was across the Sabine Pass for Thanksgiving. I was at Toledo Bend, and no, I did not fish. Somebody in this church put me against a whole lot of fishing. partner over yonder. I think we did get, well, he may go out now. I think he's still, I don't know what he do when he be out there. I'm not going to get into that. But I do need your prayers. Um, <clears throat> I'm trying to shake some of this rust off, but if you ever get a chance on the Louisiana side, it's a little place called Cypress Bend really nice. Uh, don't try to go nowhere at night. Ain't no lights on. I got caught going in there at night. Had my high beams on. I said, this ain't doing any better than the low beams. I said, just you wind your way through it. Uh, so Sister Glenn was, just, just be careful. No deer jump out. I said, deer jump out. We're going to be eating good the rest of the week. Now, all around my house, squirrels run. I didn't see one squirrel, rabbit, coon, anything. They was like, don't leave the garbage on the porch. Coons will come out. I tested it. They were like, man, don't go over yonder. We seen the look on his face. What? He eat us. But I thank God for traveling grace and arriving mercy. This morning in Mark chapter 5. Mark chapter 5. At verse 25. Now, I usually have nice fellows who say, uh, uh, if you haven't found it, just say, wait a minute. I'm like, go to the front of the book. Look up Mark and see what page number it's starting on. <laughs> Beginning at verse 25. And a certain woman, which had an issue of blood 12 years, and had suffered many things of many physicians, and had spent all that she had, and was nothing bettered, but rather grew worse. When she had heard of Jesus, came in the press behind, and touched his garment. For she said, if I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. And straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. And Jesus, immediately knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him, turned him about in the press and said, Who touched my clothes? And his disciples said unto him, Thou seest the multitude thronging thee, and sayest thou, Who touched me? And he looked round about to see her that had done this thing. But the woman fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her, came and fell down before him and told him all the truth. And he said unto her, Daughter, thy faith hath made thee whole. Go in peace and be whole of thy plague. Thank you. I want to tag this text, Jesus to the rescue. Jesus to the rescue. I 
our chief usher is here, Sister Naomi Evans, who for nearly 40 years has been a mama, auntie, big sister, and, and friend. Thank you for your presence. This story is sandwiched in between two other stories. People who are hard pressed and are out of options. First is the Gar Gardenian demonic Jairus and this woman. They are at a place in life. They have no other resource or recourse. The demonic Christ gets off the boat and is met by him. While he is traveling to his next spot, yeah, yeah. people have already watched and waited for his arrival, yeah. and Jairus comes on the scene. Nah, nah, nah. And it is moving to Jairus's house mm -hmm. that the incident of this woman with an issue of blood yes, sir. Yes, sir. is factored into the story. Mark writes and gives us a little more detail than Matthew. Could have been something that stuck in the memory bank of Simon Peter, where he peeled away some layers that Matthew, who only dealt with numbers, facts and figures uh, would, would only just give us a limited amount of data. Yeah. But Mark allows us to be able to extract some things out of the text that are basic to human existence. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Many of us find ourselves in the middle. We may have gotten into some things yeah. and you really can't see your way out but you're in the middle options are few listen, listen, listen. resources are dismal listen, listen. and you're locked somewhere in the middle you've been at it you've been trifling with it for a little while, you know enough about it to understand that you are limited in what you are able to do. And so you're just in the middle. And this woman is in a place that is familiar to many of us somewhere in our lives. And you can be in the middle of several different things at one time, never finding your way quite out yeah. of the situation, of the circumstance, right? Yeah. And, and you're almost in a holding pattern with each one of them hoping somehow a breakthrough will come through. And this woman has been struggling for 12 years. Day in and day out, it is the same thorn eating away at her life. With every beat of her heart, her life is ebbing away. 
she has gone to doctors who have done her no good. Really, the text says that all of her money was gone. And so it compounds the situation. Because we are not from Palestine. And during this time, the Mosaic law reigned supreme. Look in chapter 15 of Leviticus to find out what it said about a woman with the issue as this woman. You were ceremonially unclean. You could not touch anyone. You could not come in the presence of anyone wherever you sat once you got up. No one could sit there yeah. until a priest declared that it yeah. was clean. Yeah. It left you outside of the house of worship. Yeah. So you were not even able to go to the place and do as we have done today. Listen. Enjoined ourselves, enlisted ourselves along with them who aided us in praising God. She was yeah. prohibited from that. No family relations, no social yeah, relations. Yeah. And so it probably was disturbing and distraught in her inner being. Psychologically, we know she was a mess. Spiritually, she was a mess. And possibly going through what she was going through day in and day out, being as God, as Jesus said, a daughter of the household of faith, yeah. we know she prayed at least three times a day. Asking God to remediate her situation. I'm in a covenant relationship with you. And you are not doing anything to remediate the situation that I am in. What kind of God are you? The God of my forefathers Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Whom taught us that we could trust in you. Your servant David wrote for us, cast your cares upon him, yeah. right? Cry out unto the Lord and yeah. says that he'll even bend over to listen yeah. at you. Yeah. But here I am for 12 years. Yeah. Not one word. Yeah. Not any help. It will put you yeah. in a bad place. Yeah. We don't like to talk about those bad, yeah. bad, bad places that we find ourselves in as citizens of color. You know, you don't tell anybody you own medication. Go ahead. Oh, you tell them you own blood pressure medication. Yeah. You got no problem telling them you own insulin. Yeah. But you won't tell them you own some psychotropic meds. Yeah. You don't tell them you go to counseling. I am not on psychotropic meds, yeah. but I do go to counseling. The reason I go to counseling is because I've been able to stay at St. Mark for 31 years and stay with my wife for 33 years and have not been plastered on the most wanted poster. I'm a product of Willie Glenn and the United States Marine Corps. Uh, oh, and that, yeah, yeah, one night I kicked in twice. And she said, I'm, I'm glad the bed was big enough to where it was a glancing blow. I said, yes, ma'am. When they get in in the morning, I tell them I need to come see y'all. She said, what was going on? I said, man was trying to kill me, and I was trying to kill him. I said, and I was picked up my leg in the middle of it and kicked it. So. You look at me, think I have it all together. There are times. Amen. But I don't want it to cave in. I don't want to be in the padded room. I don't want to be in another kind of suit jacket. Isn't it amazing that, you know, you see, I've gone to the eye doctor. I've gone to the dentist. You'll go to the heart doctor. But you won't go to the one that you just sit, all you're doing is sitting down talking to yeah. him. He can take what's coming out of your head and unlock some stuff and you never, you got to know how I was socialized. I was the only child of this color for the first seven years in my educating process. 
So how do you think I was socialized? I had folk leave St. Paul say, he racist. I said, I am. I'm for my race. They for theirs, I'm for mine. Go right down here to the edge of West Great and keep riding through the neighborhood and see how far you get. Well, if you're a lady or a senior gentleman like me, they'll probably just go, they to help. Don't worry about it. But then go a little further to the other piney point. Not our piney point, the other piney point. Because I went through that. I didn't get two blocks. Those are some big blocks down in there. They pulled me over. May I help you? I say, yes. How do I get out of here? Say, I just turned over in here, didn't know where I was going. Oh, okay, well, just follow me. And I'm like, how are you riding in a Houston Police Department vehicle with your uniform on? Y'all don't patrol our hood that good. Anyway, I digressed. In the middle, no recourse. You've been praying. No answer. The Bible says you wait on God. And that's our problem. We do not like waiting. We are in patient and so I'm sure she was a person of prayer and she had been praying her situation did not get any better the text says it got worse do not believe in your heart of hearts that things cannot get worse I would not even think it because the enemy may hear your thoughts and press you or the Lord because I've said it time and time again. God knows if you are a pickup truck or an 18-wheeler and the God won't put no more on you than you can bear. That's a lie. He want to break you. He wants you to be dependent upon him. And so it, it, it just says that she had it for 12 years. She suffered many things of many physicians, spent all she had, was not better, grew worse. So rejected, dejected, and broke. So she was castigated socially, mm -hmm. relegated to the margins yeah. from the church, yeah. uh, economically devastated, yeah. psychologically depressed, yeah. spiritually confused. Yeah. I said, we've been in the place where this woman is in the text. If you are honest, yeah. just as I talked about your psychological health, yeah. you sitting there right now yeah. knowing what I'm talking about is true. Yeah. I, I, I have a few of them at St. Mark. Yeah. Uh, Reverend Ennis Randall always told me, Pastor, you know you got enough to fill up at least one pew. I said, that's not very comforting, Reverend. <laughs> and some of them you just have to go to and did you take your medicine this morning? Yeah. Uh-uh, you can tell. Yes, the entire church can tell. When you get home, get back on your medication. <laughs> I said the other Sunday, I'm going to just bring the help in. Yeah. Number 22, going in my office, number 22. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about who looking. Everybody going in there to see yeah. them. Yeah. Even if I have to hold a gun on them. It's my self-help program yeah. for the church. Yeah. Amen. But, 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 you're not seeing your way out. Life is difficult. Life is hard. It's no easy walk. Because at any moment, things can go south. Does not have to be. You that it's happening to. Let one of your loved ones be afflicted, affected. 
it bothers you. It keeps you up at night. Right? And, and the Lord wants us to tell him about it. When we are encouraged to bring these matters to the Lord, when, when he says, bring them to me, yeah. he's advocating that we take it to him, yeah. right? Yeah. When we are to cast our cares upon him because he cares for us. When yeah. we pray, yeah. there is one part that is called a petition, but yeah. there is another that is literally making a demand. Yeah. And some would say, you, know, you shouldn't make any demands before God. He's God. I have no one else whom I can make these kind of demands knowing that I am going to get an answer from him and there are times the answer is not outright given. It is delayed. Remember Abraham, he had to wait 25 years for the yeah. promise. Not a promise, the promise. Yeah. And, and, and she was not any better. She was in the middle. It was almost like throughout the process she was grasping for straws. Well, well. She was debilitated. She was despised. She was disoriented. Well. And this is her last ditch effort. Yeah. She heard. She heard. She heard. Yeah. She heard. Of Jesus. All right. And she came behind in the press. Yes, sir. Do not know how much she had. Yeah. But she had enough hope left yeah. that she had not completely thrown in the towel. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, go ahead. Although things were dark, she still had hope. The word declares, I know the plans that I have for you. Plans to bless you, not to harm you, and to give you a hope. I can testify. Hope is something the believer needs. It's something every human being needs. No matter how small it is, you ought never to give up hope. Because of the God we serve, the God we trust in. She heard and then she came. For many, our belief system is passive, active, or activated. Yeah. The passive, they come Sunday in, Sunday out. They listen at everything that goes on in church, but they never move beyond their passivity, right? They seemingly are fine being stuck in the middle. There are others who are a little bit more they hear it and, and, and they, they feel a little better. They act a little different, but it is short-lived. But the ones in whom it is activated that you've sat long enough, you've listened long enough, you've clapped long enough to where now you simply want to reach out because I guarantee you anytime you reach out, the Lord will reach down. She touched. Touch. This is my last dis, ditch, ditch effort. Yeah. I have no other yeah. recourse. Yeah. All of my options. Yeah. Yeah. Go. Yeah. I'm the scourge yeah. of society yeah. simply because of my condition. See, y'all holy folk over here, you don't understand it. Go ahead. You're the scourge Go ahead. of the community Go ahead. because of your condition. Go ahead. Does not always have to be bad well. because you are saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost. You are ostracized. Yeah. You left out, yeah. right, of some invitation. Surely, during this holiday season, well, you know, they so holy, yeah. 
right? You don't really want to invite them because they don't smoke, they don't drink, they don't cuss, they don't dance, right? Her condition left her ostracized, but her hope left. Got one more option. You've been there in life. Go ahead. All of the other options have been exhausting. Well. And yet, you heard yeah. it was Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Do not know where she got her information from. Well. But it must have been pretty good yeah. to convince her to jeopardize rest of the life she had. Well, My last yeah. ditch effort. Yeah. Come on, Come on. She, heard she heard that he had given sight yeah. to the blind. Yeah. And so today yeah. I'm going to launch out. Yeah. She heard yeah. he had unstopped muted ears, yeah. loose stammering tongue. And today, yeah. I'm going to launch out. Yeah. She had heard. Yeah. He had raised the dead. Yeah. And surely my situation is just as dead as theirs is. And this day, at this moment, I'm going to launch out. Yeah. She had heard yeah. of Jesus yeah. taking two fish and five barley loaves, right? And this day, I'm not going to let this opportunity passed me by. I'm tired of being stuck in the middle. I'm tired of dealing day in and day out. Do the math when you get home. 12 years, right? 12 months, 52 weeks, right? 365 days, 24 hours in a day. Don't get me on minutes and seconds. I done lost count. But do understand that, that she had given over Everything that she had to give, the last thing she had clinging to her was her hope. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And her memory Go ahead. that she had heard. Yeah. Where yeah. would we be for us not having heard yeah. about Jesus? Yeah. Sunday school, yeah. some big mama yeah. sitting at the table with the family. We heard about Jesus, but you can't simply rest in simply hearing about Jesus. You ought to come after Jesus. Find out the locale he's in. I know he's everywhere, but it was more of a mindset than it was of some specific geographical location. And she came in the press. Yeah. Yes, passive, active, activated. Some folk yeah. all right sitting where they are. Yeah. And you buy one of them people, go ahead and just bump into them and just, just tell them I'm trying to get where yeah. Jesus is. Yeah. And you're in my way just a little bit. I, I'm not going to sit here any longer. Thank you, Jesus. I, I, I'm not going to I'm not going to be satisfied with where I am in life. And so if I've got to upset you and irritate you, I don't care because I've been where I am too long. Been dealing with what I'm dealing with just a little bit too long. And I see my exit. And today is the day that I'm getting out of this situation. Yeah, yeah. Am I right about it? Yeah. Maybe you're satisfied with where you are. Yeah. Maybe you're not tired of being sick and tired. Maybe yeah. you're all right with being stuck in the middle. Yeah. But yeah, I learned a long time ago. Yeah. I'm tired of being in the middle. Yeah. Being between uh, this and that. Yeah. Tired of not being able 
to see the end of the situation. But I'm glad I heard of Jesus. And I came as quickly as I could. I heard him sung in the choir loft. I heard him talked about in the classroom. Rehearsed it in BTU. Heard it on Sunday morning, Sunday evening, Sunday night. And it came a time when I had to try it for myself. Imperfect was my faith. But I'm glad I kept trying. Am I right about it? We're sitting under light. It took the fella who invented it. 1,000 tries until it came to fruition. No matter how long it takes, you just keep on trying and see if the Lord will not come to your rescue. Am I right about it? I can stand and testify. Keep trusting in the Lord and never doubt. He will come through. When will he come through? Every time. There's never been a time when I was in the middle that I did not cry out unto the Lord. Find myself getting out in the press. I don't care how you feel about me. I don't care what you say when I praise him. I'm running for my rescue. I'm getting to my breakthrough. I ain't got to stand in a line. Let some man put his hand on me. I just reach up toward heaven. And my heavenly father reaches down to his child. Am I right about it? She reached out with fingertips of faith. Touched the hem of his garment. Immediately she was healed of her plague. Jesus asked, who touched me? Disciples responded, how do we know? It's more folk around here. He said this touch was a little different. I felt virtue leaving out of me. She heard Jesus ask who touched him. She came and bowed down before him and said, Lord, it was me. She told him all her story. He said, daughter, your faith hath made you whole. Sandwiched in the middle, the Gardenian demonic, Jairus and his family. Am I right about it? Everybody looking for a healing. The demonic got healed. Jairus' daughter got raised. But this woman was made whole. What is the difference? The demonic could have become repossessed. Jairus' daughter had to die again. But this woman never would suffer what she has suffered. I've seen folk the Lord has healed. They didn't look the same. They didn't act the same. But I've seen people whom he made whole. Am I right about it? I want to be made whole. It may not happen instantly. It may happen gradually. But I thank God I know it'll happen ultimately. I'm so glad I know about Jesus. I know enough to know he went about doing good. Healing the sick, raising the dead. He declared in the temple, to this end I came. To this end I'll die. I came to rescue them trapped in darkness. I came to rescue them lost in sin. One Friday on a hill called Calvary, they nailed his hands, riveted his feet, stretched him wide, hung him high, dropped him low. He died out on Calvary. But brighter than it, Sunday morning, he got up with all power. All power, all power. I heard in Matthew 
228. I've got all power. I need all power to help Jim live for Jesus. I need all power when I'm in the middle. I need all power when I'm about to give up hope. I need all power when I'm struggling in my flesh. I need all power to help me make it. I need all power to help me take it. I need all power. Ain't he able? Ain't he able? Can you say yes? Ain't he able? Can you say yes? I'm in the middle. Here I am. Help me, Lord. Rescue me. Maybe someone that would say yes to his will. There may be someone today that has lunched on to the spirit of the woman with the issue of blood. I just want to touch him. There may be someone today, you've tried everything that you were able to try, but none the better. But the minister has said to you, there is a way out, and that way out is a way in saying yes to the call of Christ and align him to do with you what he did for the woman with the issue of blood, for the demonic man. He's still in the fixing business. And if there is one today that will say yes to the call of Christ, Lord, is calling for you. Is there one today? Oh, to Jesus, I 
surrender all to him I freely give I will ever hallelujah and trust him in his presence daily live I surrender all. is there one I surrender will you come candidate for baptism by letter by Christian experience seeking a church home you found it just come there is someone in here the Lord is speaking to won't you hear his voice and obey him. You're here. You're here. The Lord brought you. You're here. Will you come? Will you come? God bless you. I was to extend. Yours to accept or to reject. Today, church, we have Sister Nisha Brown and little brother Jalen Williams coming for prayer. You never know what requests are. It's none of your business. Because those that make the request are not coming to you. They're coming to the Lord. The one who is able to answer all requests. Anybody in here beside me know that he does answer your request, your call, your, your, your need? Anybody in here beside me, he has answered your call, your need? He's able. I heard him say through the apostle, I think it's the apostle Peter, he said, and casting all of thy cares upon him, for he carried for you. Amen. First Peter 5 and 7. Amen. And if you have a need, You've been struggling, you've been trying, but none the better. I want to ask you to come and make that request known, and we're going to pray with you. There's somebody else in here that needs to respond. Come. All right, daughter. 
there's somebody else beside Sister Hearn that needs to come. Don't you sit on your, don't do nothing. And know the Lord is talking to you. You come. We want to lift you up in prayer. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. And the thing that I know that you ought to know is that is that God knows what you're coming for. You don't have to tell man But God knows what you're coming for. We just want to lift you up. Now, I, I want to say this before I pray. Don't you come up here and not have the spirit of that woman that Brother Glenn talked about. She didn't let the crowd prevent her. She elbowed her way through the crowd because she had a need that only God could handle. He knows just how much we can bear. Why, Brother Smith? Because we are our heavenly Father's children. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, glory. Glory, 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 glory. Glory, hallelujah. Hey, hey. I'm going to do that because the Spirit told me when you jumped up, that's why I was saying glory, hallelujah. Thank you, Pastor. Those of you who have come for prayer, if you're going to lay it on the altar, don't you pick it back up and go back to your seat. He said, pray without wavering. And if you put it on the altar, leave it on the altar. He says, go in your closet, shut the door, pray to God in secret. I don't need to know your situation. You don't need to ask me, uh, well, here, partner with me, this is what I'm praying about. No. You tell it to the Lord, and you leave it there. And even if my brother know what I'm praying for, or don't know what I'm praying for, even in your home, They bring up a conversation that you've been praying about. You tell them, I, I got to step out. Because for me to be privy to it and talk to you about it makes me a hypocrite before the Lord who I've already given it over to. Never to bother it again. He's going to work it out. Whether he work it out right now, whether he works it out next week, next, next year, it doesn't matter. He will work it out. You pray about it. Forget about it. Let Lord stay up all night worrying about it. That's why I said this problem I had could not seem to solve. The more I worried about it, the more I got involved. But when I turned it over, when I'm praying for my child, I prayed for mine, it's out of my hand. Praying for my finances. I prayed about mine. It's out of my hand. 
That's not in my job description to try to help God. Abraham, five years before the promise came because he and his wife tried to help God for a promise. And God said, that's not the promise. In less than 20 days, we will be at day 1,000 of praying without breaking since March 20th, 2020. And it's been through that time that God had to teach me. Now, son, if you're going to pray about it, let me handle it. Let me work it out. I don't have that kind of intellect nor those kind of resources. And I got sick of being bothered at night. I sleep like a dead man. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, how we give you praise and glory right now for the things that you have done. And if we know you hear us, it's already been settled. All we have to do is pray and trust in you. And everything, all of these matters shall be attended to. Each one that's present has some particular situation, problem, they are incapable of handling themselves. And so, oh God, as each one lay it on the altar, pray that you would give them not simply trust in you, but patience to let you work it out. Because there are times we can lay it on the altar, mess stuff up, Press pause where it takes a little longer for what you were going to do for us to come through because you've got to stop and work on us again. So, oh, Father, keep us at bay. Keep us out of the way. And we'll just wait on you. We will stand still and see the salvation of our Lord. You're not a man where you are short concerning your promise. If you said it, you'll bring it to pass. What? Whatever it is, what they're asking, what they're seeking, what they're trying to find. Dear Father, right now, in the mighty name of Jesus, answer it right now. Let doubt walk out the door. Anxiety leave them. Give them a patient spirit. For we know that all things work together for the good to them who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. Attend them on their way. For the enemy is already trying to find an inroad. But greater is he that is within us than he that is in the world. We pray and ask this prayer in the strong, precious, and powerful name of our risen Lord. Amen. Don't simply claim it, but be claimed by it. Brand new, he will 
will take good care of you. Just come to Jesus, Jesus. You know that chanting with us. Come to Jesus. Jesus. Why you have you but oh my soul is happy the Lord is in this place amen 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 he's in this place you ready Amen. Oh, I want to give my life to, I want to, I want to confess my calling to the ministry. Robert came to me and asked me, he said, uh, when do you know the Lord has called you to preach? I said, you'll know it. And when he called, you cannot say no. You have to respond to the call. And the Lord said to me, he's ready. And I know God can't lie. We're going to ask that you keep this young man in prayer. And I'll let y'all know when he will do his first sermon. Amen. Amen. But you keep him in prayer. Because now Satan is going to give him a hard time. 
but great is he that is in you than he that's in the world. Satan can do all he wants to try and discourage, but the Holy Spirit will encourage. Amen. God bless you, son. I'll let you know. You stay with Papa. We, we want to keep you in, in prayer and also help you. Okay. All right. Announcements for today and the following week are as follows. First of all, I'd just like to say to my little brother Jim, God has certainly used you on today. And Jesus has came to the rescue here at the Horeb this morning. God bless you for that message. We have our prayer list. We're asking that you would pray for the entire Mount Horeb family as well as our little brother that just confessed his, to the ministry. Let's keep our arms around him. Keep him in prayer. So much is going on that he could be into the day, but he has confessed his calling to the ministry. May God bless and keep him. Saturday Night Live. Our next meeting is December 10th at 5 p.m. I'm sorry, pre-service is at 5, and the service will be at 6. We're asking that all of our young men and women would come out and be a part of this celebration. We're trying to get our youth uh, back and established, and we're asking that you would come out and be a part of this event. Our active shooter class will be this coming Saturday at 10 a.m. We need to RSVP to Dr. Olinda Johnson. Her number is listed up there. This class is free. We will have a HPD officer that will come and teach this class. So please, everyone, please come out. They're going to tell us how to handle ourselves in situations if we were to have an active shooter to come into the church. So let us come out and be a part of, of this event, this training. This is good training for anywhere. We could be in Walmart. We don't know where we might be when an active shooter may take place. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. I'd like to ask little Desmond Franklin, would you come forth? Little brother Desmond Franklin was a part of the elite Horn Frogs. 6B football team. Come on up here. Come to the door. He was number one of three four-year-olds playing tackle football with all sixth and seventh grade year olds. They were undefeated this year, 11 to zero, and they won their Super Bowl. Pastor. <laughs> He has his little Super Bowl ring. Take his ring up there for the pastors to put on his little, his little Super Bowl ring. This congratulations from your mama and your whole family and the entire Mount Horror family. Amen. We got a Super Bowl champ in the horror. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Uh, I'm sure. We've gotten through Thanksgiving. We'd like to thank everyone who uh, gave and participated to make the Reverend Darrell Smith Holiday Basket Committee a success. We're now ready for the names for our Christmas list. If you are in need of a basket for Christmas, we're asking that you would give your name to Brother Florence, Melvin Florence. And so that, uh, and the date I'll give you next Sunday what day the distribution will take place. But please give your names if you are in need of a basket for Christmas. From the entire uh, Reverend Darrell Smith Holiday Basket Committee, we thank you for all that you have done, all that you are doing, and all that you will do in the future. Amen.
giving honor to God, who is the head of my life. Speak a little louder. First, giving honor to God, who is head of my life, to all the ministers on the roster and those in the pulpit. Let the church say amen. Amen. That was a glorious sermon that we had today. It was just wonderful. And there is a lot that a lot of us have been through. Hard pressed on both sides, all sides. And to just touch the hem of his garment. That amount of hope, <laughs> that amount of hope is just all we need, the mm -hmm. size of a mustard seed. Mm -hmm. I am here to present to the illustrious Pastor James Glenn a token of our appreciation for that wonderful ceremony, that ceremony that you gave us today. And to our beautiful, lovely Sister Silva Smith and our illustrious pastor, Dr. Samuel H. Smith, we would like to present to you and to our First Lady a token of our appreciation. Because if it had not been for our shepherds, where would we be? President to come up, please. All right. We would like to, on behalf of my Horeb junior, uh, junior Mission, we would like to thank y'all all ladies, young ladies, for stepping out and coming uh, to a fellowship with us during service. And if y'all all don't mind, could all the Junior Mission that came out stand up, please? And also my Horeb Junior Mission, can y'all please stand up as well? Some of y'all say, uh, which part of Texas are y'all from as well? Amen. I uh, just want to first uh, give praises to God and to uh, the angel of this house, Dr. Smith, and to the guest preacher of the hour. I am Antaria Barrett. I am the first vice president of the Missionary Baptist General Convention of Texas Juniors Women's Auxiliary, and I am from Dallas, Texas. I am from Evergreen Baptist Church, and my pastor is Dave Stevenson. Amen. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. His mercy is everlasting, and his truth endured through all generations. Uh, my name is Desiree Hendricks Patterson. I bring you greetings on behalf of the St. John District Junior Women's Auxiliary in Austin, Texas. Thank you. I will bless the Lord at all times for his praises shall continually be in my mouth. My name is Andrea Henry, and I bring you greetings from the Fellowship United District Association of Texas in Houston. Moderator Terrence D. Grant Malone is our moderator. Thank y'all, ladies. And for our president, I would like to give you this gift as it's coming out. Amen. Good afternoon, everyone. To God be the glory for the wonderful things that he has done. I know time has been far spent, but my name is Monique Goodman Lopez, and I am currently the president of the Missionary Baptist General Convention of Texas Junior Women's Auxiliary. I come from Bryan College Station, Texas. Not far from here at all, but I am so 
I'm elated and happy to be here, and I want to thank um, Sister Amy. She has been such a gracious host, um, even in the process of, of us coming. Um, I just want to say to the young women that are here, get involved. Um, it is truly a sisterhood to be a part of Junior Women's Auxiliary. My best friends came out of JWA. And I encourage you to get involved. Get involved in the work of the Lord because only what you do for Christ will last. So thank you again for your gracious welcome. And we hope to come back soon. All right. And we also have gifts for Sister Smith and Pastor Smith as well. We also have gifts for Pastor Tim Glenn and his wife, Sister Glenn. And for uh, all the junior women that came out, please meet us in the cafeteria and after service, after we all let out. Thank you. One announcement I forgot. Uh, we will be celebrating our pastor's Helping Hands ministry on the second Sunday in December. We're asking that uh, each member would come. We want to show much love to our pastor of 59 years, he and his wife. And so we're asking that each member, if you will, give $25. If not, you can give whatever you have. Don't stay home because of what you don't have. Come out and just show him that we love him. We're so grateful to God for blessing us to have him for these 59 years. And so we want to let him know that we haven't forgotten about him and we thank God for him. And we're gonna be ending uh, the month of November this year and all of us December folks, hey, we will be celebrating on next Sunday. Get ready, December. No, I didn't intend for her to take my thunder. <laughs> Amen. But uh, all of the November babies, please stand if you were born in November. If you were born in November, please stand. Happy birthday to y'all. Happy birthday to y'all. Happy birthday, November babies. Happy birthday to you. As you make your exit. Amen. Now, what more can be done? I feel that God has really blessed us today. Is that right, Sister Bobby? Sister Bobby? Is that right? Amen, amen. See, I, I pick on Bobby because Bobby writes almost all of my sermons and she, she lets me know that she's really listening. And I appreciate that. And to the junior women, God bless you for coming. And uh, we, we, we are striving to get the train back on the tracks like it should be. And once it occurs, then we'll be a part of the circle of the junior women of Texas. Amen. So with that being said, I, I was moved and led by 
the Spirit of God to have a word of prayer for the family. Uh, Yolanda, what, what's, what, 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 what's his name? Tremaine. Bridget? Oh, Reese's. Now, he was, he, he was my member, and we were very close. Whenever he had a need, he would always come to pastor. I never, ever told anybody about the support that I gave to this young man. He was sincere and dedicated, and I praise God for him. His brother was baptized not too long ago. Amen. We, we praise God for him. And we are led to lift that family up in prayer. If you don't mind just standing and, and praying individually for this family, that God will give them the strength they need to make it through this ordeal. And he's so able, he's able to give strength where strength is needed. Amen. Shall we pray and pray silently, but pray sincerely for this family? Amen. Now, we're going to, uh, to dismiss you, but before we dismiss you, during the Thanksgiving service, we had a young man to come in and be, become a part of our fellowship that we had in the cafeteria after service. And he was in the service. And I just want to acknowledge his presence with us today. Right. Dick, would you raise your hand and wave your hand and let everybody know who I'm talking. Wave your hand. You, you can come. You, you, Come up, come up here. Amen. This, this young man was here with us during the Thanksgiving service and the dinner. And I, I'm, I'm going to give you a chance to just say whatever's in your heart, son. Deacon Russell Jacobs, and I'm uh, under the leadership of uh, Pastor Randall at Agape over in Southeast Houston, and I heard so much about this man of God, the Smith, I mean Pastor Smith. I just want to lift it up and say that you all will see me again. I was sitting there and he had cooked Thanksgiving dinner for us and it was really wonderful. At 90 something years old and still going strong, it's nothing but God. 
It is nothing but God. And as long as the days that I'm here on earth left on earth, I'm standing on the battlefield. Because I came out of a, a, a really rough side of the world. And God placed my feet on solid ground. And I want to say thank you, Lord. And so you all will be seeing my face again. Reverend Smith, Pastor Smith say, Pastor Randall is your first, uh, is your, your pastor. He said, but I'm your second pastor. All right. I say, sure, right. I'll be right here with you. Mm-hmm. And so I just want to thank y'all. And I will be back again. My friend Elizabeth, over 35 years, we've been real, very close to each other. She's been right there in my heart all of the time. We've been right there as true friends. As true friends. And so she always had invited me. So the good Lord put it in my heart at the right time. Mm-hmm. You know, not in my time, at God's time. You're right. And so I want to just thank y'all, and I'll come in and be a part of y'all church from time to time. I just want to say thank you for the invitation. Now, before... Jim dismiss us I, I want to present to Mount Horror the newlyweds and I want the newlyweds to stand by one another so that I can make the proper introduction I, I didn't perform the ceremony but uh, I, I said the Lord's I sing the Lord's prayer but what I want to do I want to as their pastor present to you brother and sister uh, what's your name Brother and sister, what, what did you say? I am still Travis Hearn. Oh, 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 right. Brother and sister, Travis Hahn. And they're, they're, they're my children, my son and my daughter. Amen. 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 God bless you. Amen. Yes, sir. God bless you. Thank you, Pastor, and thank you, Mount Horup, to the young ladies from the Missionary Baptist General Convention of Texas, I'm the president's brother. So I'll let him know that you all came and fellowship. Uh, please be in prayer for uh, Pastor William Glenn as he assumes the awesome responsibility of being our state president. Uh, be in prayer for him, it will convene December 7th and 8th at the Pilgrim Rest Missionary Baptist Church in Dallas, Texas. Uh, uh, I'm thankful to the Lord that uh, God put him in that place. Um, I think he has served admirably down through the years. And I was letting them know who I am they was like, we don't see you. I say, and you won't see me. But my brother is my heart. And so he's going to have to keep me in check. Amen. But I pray and trust that you will have a wonderful rest of your day. 
second Sunday, let us bless Pastor and Sister Smith. I'll be preaching out, but I will send my representation. Amen. Amen. Our Father and our God, we thank you for this time that you have allowed us to spend in your presence. We thank you, dear Father, for your grace, your mercy, and your peace. We thank you, O oh Father, that you came to our rescue when our souls were sin sick and lost. We were in the middle, could not see our way out. We thank you for giving us hope during this season. We pray, O oh God, that we will reach out to the least, the last, the lonely, the left out, the unloved. For you said in your word, when you have done it unto the least of these, you have done it also unto me. We pray and ask that the love of God, which is seen in you, the Father, the grace of God that is revealed in the redeeming blood of Jesus Christ, the power of God that is manifested in the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, we pray and ask that love, grace, and power will rest, rule, and abide with us all henceforth, now and forever. Amen. You are dismissed. Now that's it.